This is a situation, simple harmonic motion is just, we have a mass hanging from a, a spring that's attached to something here. So let's try and draw this here. This is, uh, here's uh, the spring. Okay, we need a mass to hang from it. Let's use, let's use this as a mass. So there's the mass at the bottom of the thing. Okay, this may work, this may not work. The thing is going up and down, right? It's starting from, uh, it's starting from, where does it start? Does it say where it starts? Well, if it's, if this is its position, five cosine of t, where does that graph start? Where's the position start? Five cos t? Well, I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have to write the graph over here. Where does cosine graph start? This, right? Five. Except that the problem is, this is defined this way. So, just look at, look at the, uh, the positive directions down. I know that's just a revolutionary concept for you, but we're going to make this graph where uh, where down is positive, right? It's five units beyond where it sits normally. Okay, I know that's troubling because when we draw the cosine graph, we should probably stick to this. We should probably draw the cosine graph this way, even though the mass is down below. Okay, there's the cosine graph. Position of fives at the bottom. As, once you let go of the thing, what happens? What's, what happens? You, so it starts here, and it goes down there, and then you let go. What happens? Goes up, and then it gets up to here. Spring's not having any effect on it at this point. What happens then? Goes down because of gravity. Suddenly, this, get to the point where the spring is stretched so much that it pulls it back up. This is a case where it's not like, uh, I know it's a bit off-center there, that, uh, that mass. That's what's troubling you, maybe. But um, I know that this is uh, this is different than the situation of this is a situation where the acceleration is not going to be constant. When you launch something up in the air, if you have a if you have a ball and you kick it up in the air and it travels up and then it goes down, and hits the ground again, goes up and hits the ground here. That's a case where the acceleration is constant, other than wind and that stuff. The acceleration is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Here the acceleration is going to be different because in this situation we're assuming the only thing acting on the ball is gravity. What's acting on this thing in this case? The spring and gravity, right? There's two things, so it changes as you go here. So you're going to find when you start to find the, the various derivatives here, we're going to write down what the derivatives are and then we're going to try and think about what they mean in this situation. Okay, so if we have, let's color coordinate this. I guess I drew the original one in black, so let's go. Position is 5, cos t. So let's draw the, the first derivative, which is velocity, right? First derivative is velocity. What is that going to be? With your newfound trig knowledge, what's that going to be? You were just going to say that, negative 5 sine of t. Okay? Think about what that means in the situation. What is the thing's velocity when you start and when you whoops when you uh, when you have this thing moving here? Um, I know that this is troubling because it's a bit off center. Let's put it over there. There we go. That's bothering you. I know. I didn't draw the spring very well. Um, as this thing goes up and down here, we started at positive five. Um, this is really going to be bad that the position is backwards, but whatever. Um, What's happening with this? Uh, you know what? Can we change this because can we change this to the positive direction? Can we make this positive? Because it's going to be really un hard to understand otherwise. So let's say it starts at the top then instead because it has the same effect, right? Let's say it starts here. We let it go. Starts at positive five and goes down. Is that better? Now positive is the top, okay? Because that makes more sense, okay? Same function and everything. Let's just say up the top is the positive five. You let it go. Um, what happens velocity-wise? If we try and draw that graph of velocity, minus 5 sine of t, what does that graph look like? What does minus 5 sine of t look like? What's its velocity? What did I do to that thing? The ball shrunk. <laughs> what, uh, why is it 
do that. That's weird. Um, what, what is the velo- what's the velocity at the beginning when you start it at the top? It's zero. What happens to the velocity after that? Yeah, but it's it's going which direction? It's going in the negative direction, right? It goes this way, right? This is what negative 5 sine of t looks like. Negative 5 sine of t looks like this. It goes down. It comes back up. It's up here, and it's down to there. That's what the velocity looks like, right? Because you start the thing at the top, okay? It starts at the top. Its velocity is negative because it's going down. It's going fast there, and then it if I, if... It starts off, it's going faster, and then it slows down to zero. And then it starts to go back up again. It's got a positive velocity, and it's zero. Okay? The fr- at first, it's going down, so it's got this negative velocity. Hits the bottom, and has zero velocity at the bottom. And then goes up the whole way and stops at the top, right? It starts with zero velocity, it has zero velocity when it hits the bottom. It has zero velocity when it hits the top. All right? So that graph represents the velocity of that thing. The acceleration is tough because you're used to things where the acceleration is constant. It's just a number. The acceleration is not going to be constant here. What's the acceleration going to be here? What's the acceleration? The derivative of that function. What's the acceleration? Negative 5. Cosine of t. Let's draw it and then try to make sense of it in the picture. Okay? Negative 5 cos of t means positive 5 cos of t started at the top. Negative 5 cos of t is just going to be the reflection of that black curve, right? So start at the bottom. It's going to be up here. And it's going to be back at the bottom like that. Okay? So it looks something like this. And... Not that this graph is well drawn, but it's going to be something like that. What does that tell you about its acceleration at the start? At the start, it's up here. Which direction is the acceleration taking it? Which which direction is the acceleration? It's down, right? The acceleration's in the negative direction, down, because what's acting on it at that point? Gravity. Spring's not acting on it. Spring's loose. It's not doing anything. So the acceleration is the most negative it's going to be, the most downward. As it goes down to here, when it's at the very bottom, you're right here, right? Which direction is the acceleration pointing in that situation? It's pointing up, right? Why is it up at the very bottom? Why is it why is it being accelerated upwards at the very bottom? Because the tension of the spring is kind of overcoming gravity, right? It starts to accelerate it up. The acceleration is constantly changing in this situation. It's different than when you take something and throw it through the air, right? Throw something through the air, gravity's always pulling it down. There's nothing else acting on it, right? Slightly there's a bit of wind resistance, but you usually ignore that, right? The acceleration is, is changing as you go here, right? It's at the top. It's being accelerated down. At the bottom, it's being accelerated up. It changes in the middle. What's happening in the middle here? It starts at the top. It starts. It goes like this. Which way is it being accelerated right there? It's zero, right? The acceleration is zero there. That's kind of where the two balance out. And then it's it changes as this thing goes, right? As it goes like that. This is the hard one here, this thing. Here's a good definition for you. I didn't make this name up. You've never talked about the rate of change of acceleration. You learned that velocity is the rate of change of whoops, of position, right? You learned that velocity is rate of change of position. No idea why that turned like that. This is the rate of change of position. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. You could talk about the, the rate of change of acceleration, and it happens to be called... Oops. 